Jacobson here, and I am back from about three years without producing any content um, with a video on um, a topic that recently uh, I became aware of. there had been maybe a little bit of misinformation out there about where I stand on this. So in this video, I'm going to talk about seven reasons why you should never count cards. And the reason for this is because of this um, article that I published on 888casino.com back in January of 2017. So at the time, I had sold my blog AP Heat to them, and I wrote a couple of extra articles for them, and uh, there was absolutely no restrictions on what I wrote about. I could write about anything I wanted to. And one of the things that I've said for years and years is that ordinary blackjack card counting is not a lucrative endeavor. It's not something that should be encouraged for new young advantage players. It's not something that casinos should pay particular attention to. And maybe the way I presented it um, made it ripe for misinterpreting that I was actually shilling for online casinos or I had some other ulterior motive. I'm, I'm retired. I don't have any income from the casino industry of any sort, um, nor do I want any. I've refused many jobs over the last three years. But what I definitely want is for um, my opinions to be appropriately represented. So I'm going to go through this article um, as I wrote it, and then I'm going to also add a few things to it that maybe highlights better where I'm coming from. So let's just get started. First of all, this is my thesis, my underlying thesis, is that there are much stronger ways to beat the house, legally advantage play, than ordinary blackjack card counting. And it's this obsession um, on both sides of the table, both with people who want to beat the house and also casino uh, table games personnel and surveillance that causes all this pain um, over this topic. So let's just go through uh, some of the things that, that are true about blackjack card counting. These are absolute, I, I will concede these up front so that we don't need to have any debate about the fact that you can, in fact, beat a casino, you can get an edge over the house using card counting, and that there have been reputable and honest individuals, and there continue to be, who are furthering, they're writing books about it, they're hanging out on websites, they're trying to teach people. There's all sorts of dedicated people out there, good people, who are trying to show you how you can beat the house using card counting. So good for them. And there have been highly successful teams and individuals who've made millions of dollars uh, doing blackjack card counting. Of course, we just can go to the start of it all with Kenny Houston's teams back in uh, Atlantic City in the 19, 1970s. And these teams have persisted over the decades. The MIT team, the Holy Rollers, and others have come and gone. And uh, there are individuals out there today who are beating the house by counting cards. So good for them. But there are very few of these people, right? So uh, right now, I just know a handful of people, even though I'm out of the industry, I, I do pay attention to some websites and I know about some individuals through other channels who pretty much this is what they do with blackjack card counters. Maybe they do a little bit of other stuff on the side, but there are a few people who make a living. Not a great living, by the way, by any professional standard, but they make a living just as an ordinary blackjack card counter. So that's what I concede. So now I'm going to tell you my seven reasons that you should not be a blackjack card counter. You should you should just avoid that as something that is the way that you're going to go about beating the house. So the first reason is it's really hard to learn blackjack card counting. Um, it might just seem like, oh, this is something you just have to, everybody has to go through this sort of trial by fire to become an advantage player. But I just want to outline at the very minimum, what you need to know to be a successful blackjack card counter in terms of just the informational content. First of all, you have to learn how to play blackjack. And while there is a basic outline to the game, there are lots of different rule variations that can come in that affect small changes in how you play that you have to learn those small changes for every game you play and their effect on the house edge. So you need to learn all about the game 
the rule variations, the house edge that generates. And after you've done that, you have to memorize how you play every situation that can come up on the board, whether you have a, a pair of threes against a dealer up part of an eight, or you're sitting with a, um, a, not, a seven two against a dealer three. So every single possibility for two cards you could hold in a dealer up card is, uh, has a fixed play. And those plays also extend to after you're, you've hit once and whether you might want to hit again. There are situations, depending on what you have and what the dealer has, that you have to memorize. So this is a lot of information. Now, a lot of it is sort of chunkable. You can figure out basic rules and guidelines, but it's just a lot, all right? There's no question this is an undertaking. So once you've learned all of that, then you have to learn a card counting system. So a card counting system like high-low or, or knockout or whatever it is you choose will involve practicing your running count, true count conversions, which are dividing, you know, getting fractions. Do you round them? Do you truncate them? Do you floor them? So there's all of this sort of mechanics about then learning how to count on top of having learned basic strategy, which is additional information. Beyond that, you have to learn what are called indices, which are where you would go from doing one action at the table to another. So for example, if you have a 16 and the dealer has a 10 up, do you stand or you hit? There is a, a so-called index play for that that tells you when you should do one action or the other. So you have to learn at least 18 indices. Uh, some people learn into the hundreds of these indices. It's another part of the memorization process. And then after you've accomplished all that, there are some other mathematics that really, if you want to be any sort of professional, you need to learn on top of it. Ideas like longing, like your bet ramp, when do you raise your bet and by how much, the Kelly criterion, which has to do with managing the risk you want to take of losing your entire bankroll versus how much money you're willing to wager on any given hand, your risk of ruin, and this idea called N not or in zero, which is roughly how many hands do you have to play to get to the long run. And the long run is, is to say that um, if you are still losing after that number of hands, then your results must be greater than one standard deviation below your expected value. Okay, those are some complicated terms, but n naught is a very important number because essentially it means how long to get to the, the so-called long run for the games you're playing. All right, it's hard to learn. All of that is just the mechanical knowledge, the information that's behind the game that you have to go through. So there have been endless books written on this subject. So here are just a few of those books. And if you go to Google and you type in blackjack card counting, excuse me, Amazon, you'll come up with well over 100 books. I just want to point out one book in particular right here. So this is my book on the subject right here, all right? So uh, this book is now available for free on my website. If you want to uh, go to ijmp.org, you can download the PDF for my Blackjack Card Counting book. So there's, there's books of all sorts. Of course, the book that started it all is this one right here, Beat the Dealer by Ed Thorpe, and that was back in uh, 1962. So this is old, this idea of beating the house using blackjack card counting. This is old stuff. It's been around for a long time. You're not going to surprise anybody by being a card counter. But just the fact that there's all these books really underscores how much knowledge and information there is potentially out there to absorb. So the next thing is um, it's hard to find a good game. So let's suppose you've mastered everything you need in order to beat blackjack. Then you have to find a game that you can beat. And there's any number of reasons why that's become very difficult. For example, many casinos are now offering very poor rules. For example, blackjack paying six to five instead of the standard three to two. So that adds a tremendous amount to the house edge and uh, for the most part makes the game unbeatable by blackjack card counting. So you might run into casinos that use these continuous shuffle machines. Um, so essentially after every hand, the cards that have just been used are put back into the shuffler. And so that makes it essentially impossible to, um, to count the game. Although I will say that there are some teams in Asia 
that have learned how to uh, count certain games, even though they use a continuous shuffler, but the, their edges are microscopic at best. So one of the things you learn about is penetration, how far through the shoe or the, or the double deck does the dealer deal before shuffling. So you have to find a game that has fairly deep penetration, otherwise it becomes worthless by itself. There may be a no mid-shoe entry rule, so if you have some sort of idea that you want to wong the game, which means to enter when the count is good for you and leave when the count is bad for you, there are rules set in place that would make that particular strategy impossible to carry out. And the game itself, if you find a good game, may be specifically designed just to catch card counters. The very famous example of that in a casino in Oregon along Highway 5 that did that maybe 15 years ago. Um, and they set up a great blackjack um, game and they got card counters coming in there and that's how the company, I'm not going to mention the name, got started that uh, with their database. So there are all sorts of um, reasons why you're going to spend a lot of time scouting, going in and out of casinos or using reference materials to find games, essentially not playing, so time wasted. So. Look, the third reason, excuse me, you can hear my voice. It's, I haven't given a lecture in a long time. I feel kind of like a professor here. So here you go. So it's actually, it's hard to count cards in a casino. So if you've mastered all of this stuff and you've found a game and you go in a casino and you want to, you want to, actually count cards, you run into all sorts of other things that make it difficult. Well, there's distractions of all sorts, there's, there's uh, background music, there's noise, there's conversations at the table, there's cigarette, cigar, pipe smoke around you, there's ploppies. A ploppy is an ordinary uh, civilian player called a square or a straight or a ploppy uh, who really doesn't understand anything about how blackjack can be beaten, but they think they do. They kind of have a this idea that there's a certain way the game should be played, which is just wrong, it's not logical. So when you do plays that sort of defy their sense of what the game should, how it should be played, they get mad at you. And so you have to deal with, with people actually getting mad at you for doing things that are the best possible thing you could be doing. And then you're gonna have the dealer in the pit talking to you. They're trying to feel out who you are, whether you're someone who is a knowledgeable player or not. And so that's a distraction by itself. And then you're going to have heat, which is its own little world that you have to get used to. You're going to be watched by the dealer, you're being watched by Pitt, you're being watched by the surveillance, because they're on to you. They know about card counting. So they're looking at every player, especially any player who's betting any substantial amount of money, trying to figure out whether that player is beating the house or not and should be possibly backed off. Um, and then because of that, you'll have to change how you play and not always play optimally in order to avoid um, the pitfalls that he brings. So this is going to cost you some income by virtue of the fact that you're not playing optimally. So um, your sessions will be short. You're going to be in and out usually in less than an hour. You might put out just a couple of your largest bets and then start looking at pe uh, people trying to look at you. So you're just going to leave. You're going to walk out of the casino. So just those are some of the reasons that it's hard to count cards. Of course, just losing the count or not being experienced or um, just being overly tired or you've played too long or you've been scouting and walking all day long. There's all sorts of other reasons that make it hard to count cards. Now, one of the other things that um, I guess is one of the biggest misconceptions people have about blackjack carding, count carding, is the actual profitability. So here's what I set up. I, I said, suppose you have the ability where there's zero heat. Nobody's watching you. There's no distractions. You're a, you're a perfect card counter. You've memorized every index. You know perfectly how to play the game. You, and you're just able to sit down at the table. And in that situation, how do you make the most money you could possibly make? And we're not talking about risk of ruin or, or bankroll or Kelly or any of this stuff. The way you make the most money is by putting out your maximum bet whenever you have the edge. And when you don't have the edge, you just sit out the hand. So for the purposes of the simulation, um, we ran, I ran, actually I have to give kudos to Norm Wattenberger for 
um, running these simulations for me. He's a very well-renowned um, blackjack computer programmer. So here is the perfect situation, right? We have the perfect player in the perfect game. And at my seminars over the year, I've actually asked, you have a perfect card counter playing for one hour. Whenever he has the edge, he puts out a $100 bet. When he doesn't have the edge, he just sits out the hand, essentially bet zero. So perfect card counter, 100 hands, $100 when he has the edge, uh, zero when he doesn't. How much do you think that card counter earns? So during my seminars, when I ask this question, I've had people say $200, $300, $500. It's sort of typical numbers that you hear from the audience. And this, this is um, typically casino personnel who are giving me these numbers. But even you, I don't know what your background is. Uh, if, you may have already scanned below, so you know the answer. But what is your gut reaction? And when I tell you the actual numbers, when you look below and you see these, that, that if we are... If we are um, looking at a six deck game over here, which hit where the dealer hits on soft 17, double on anything, double after split, and the cut card is fairly deep at 52 cards from the end, then the perfect card counter playing that six deck shoe game is just going to win about $33.58 every hundred hands. We know double deck is a little better, so if you take a double deck game, again, with fairly deep penetration, um, and I should have put in double on anything in there as well. At any rate, the win per 100 hands there is now at $66, and this really underscores the idea that double deck is a better game than um, six deck, but that number is still maybe way lower than you thought it would be. So the truth is that the profit potential is very low, and this is perfect play. Now let's talk about not perfect play, but the kind of play that you might actually be doing in real life. So again, what we have is six decks, double on anything. We're talking about your win per hundred hands with a hundred dollar max bet. And to make this realistic, we're going to give you 22 high-low indices for your card counting decisions and an 8 to 1 spread, bet spread. So your difference between your minimum and your maximum bet is 8 to 1. Now, I took these numbers from work by Don Schlesinger that he published in his book Blackjack uh, Attack, I think the third edition. So what we see here, I, what I've done is I've, I've highlighted in yellow the most common situation that um, you as a blackjack player are probably going to encounter. And that's a six deck game with a hit 17, dealer hits on soft 17 rule, where the cut cards actually played a, placed a deck and a half from the end. So in this case, that $33 drops down to $15.50. So in real life, your $100 max bet is going to get you about $15, um, which is, I guess, minimum wage a lot of places. So now you have a minimum wage job with a $100 max bet. But that doesn't include your travel time to and from the casino, the time you're going to be scouting for games, whether you're scouting at home looking through uh, current blackjack news or you're walking between casinos. Any bookkeeping that you do, which is uh, paperwork I always used to do after I would visit a casino. Your hotels, you may be traveling, so you're going to have meal costs. Um, you may have airplane or driving or gas uh, costs. And above everything else, are you declaring this income for taxes? I always did. I didn't make that much um, as a card counter, but I always declared what I made every single year, and I kept very careful books. So you see this is really almost, um, it's like you have to bet a lot of money to make any real income. And a $100 wager is already going to get some attention at a lot of the casinos around the country. So uh, let's talk about just by comparison, um, what may be the simplest alternative method, so-called hole carding. And I'm not going to talk about what hole carding is other than to say that you're seeing one of the dealer's three cards prior to making your playful decision. You may or may not know the game three-card poker, but um, I just want to show you what this strategy is. So here's the strategy. If you see two through jack as the dealer's card that you've got a peek of, you're going to play every hand. Queen, king, or ace have a, have, each has a very simple rule as well. So if you look at this, um, these rules right here, then 
you could memorize this stuff right here in about 15 minutes. And maybe you'll have a friend who'll take you out once or twice to show you the ropes of finding a whole uh, dealer who's flashing a whole carter. And in about just a couple days of experience, not memorizing 550 plays or, or indices or Kelly criterion or anything, you're already um, playing a game where you have a much stronger edge. Uh, in fact, your edge over the house is 3.48% if you happen to find this situation. So in practical terms, your win rate per 100 hands compared to the perfect card counter is about $348. If you account for the difference in speed of the games from blackjack to three card poker, we're talking about $120 per hour for your $100 bet, which makes this at least, uh, we're about twice as good as a pretty good double deck game. And this is primarily what I played in the early 2000s, let's just say 2001, 2, 3, maybe up to 2005. It was pretty widely available. It's much harder to find now. It's, uh, the industry has gotten pretty wise to the fact that this game can be um, whole carded. But just by an example, I'm just trying to stress the point here that there are other ways of beating the house, that, that card counting is a very low income method uh, of doing this. So next thing, the um, bankroll swings can be absolutely brutal. So here you are as a card counter. And just as an example, if you're playing the six deck kid 17 game that I was talking about where you're making $15 uh, every hundred hands and you are a good card counter, then just by chance after 500 hours, roughly one in six card counters is still going to be losing. So you might play 500 hours at that table, five, um, 50,000 hands, right? 50,000 hands of blackjack and still losing as a card counter. You're losing just because you got bad cards. And this does happen. Card counters, uh, many go on, even professionals go on extended losing streaks that can last three months up to six months um, and even sometimes more than that. And you hear them sometimes talk about this on websites online. It's just brutal. So N0, this idea of how many hands you have to play um, so that if you're still losing after that number of hands, then you are at least one standard deviation below expectation. So that's N0. Again, typically 30 to 60,000 hands. There's few counters um, who are novices, who are beginners, who really understand how bad it can get, how hard it is to beat the house using ordinary blackjack card counting. So just know that that's true. It's, it can be tough. It can be very tough. So reason number six to never count cards, you will get caught. There is no question about it. Um, if you are any sort of card counter who's actually putting out large bets, they know who you are, what you look like. This is old technology. It's been around since 1962. Almost every casino gives training to its employees and surveillance on how to identify card counters. I've given those trainings multiple times. There are just tells that make it easy to spot card counters. Let me just tell you some of, of what those are. So, for example, you spread your bet through a wide range, this idea of the bet spread, or you look for people who are only taking insurance when their maximum bet is out, regardless of the hand. So they, they might not insure their hard 20 against an ace when the count's negative, but they will definitely insure their um, hard 15, their 8-7 against a dealer 6 when the count is high. So you just look for the size of the bet when the person has the max bet out or are they taking insurance then that's a, a tell for a card counter and there's other things out there how they play their hand uh, many times you just watch and they play a few minimum bets then then they make some excuse i have to go to the bathroom and and so that's a tell that the count is negative and they want to leave the table they usually want to play alone they want to play fast they don't want to play rated um, they don't want to drink alcohol um, one of the tricks I learned was to take a beer bottle, ask for a beer, um, go into the bathroom, you empty the beer, you refill it with water, you bring it back to the table, and that's some sort of camouflage, making, you know, it looks like you're drinking your beer, but you're just drinking water. There's all sorts of uh, 
camouflage they use. Um, there's also software that's available. There's all sorts of software. I wrote some software um, many years ago that helped um, a casino identify people who were card counting their continuous shuffle machines, right? Of all things, that's what this was for an overseas casino. But there is um, software available that is used in the United States that you just plug in a person's play. And it pretty much, if, you're, if you don't know how to tell, then this will at least give you some indication of whether it's a strong possibility. So you will get caught. And the problem is that once you're caught, your future is limited. It's going to be very tough to ever do any advantage play. You may be trespassed at the casino, and so you won't be able to return to that casino without um, being risk of being arrested. Um, they will get some good high-resolution photographs of you. Those will be distributed through uh, a number of companies, um, and many casino corporations just have their sort of in-house distributions. Um, there are networks of surveillance professionals where information is shared. So you're you're going to be known very quickly if you're caught and a picture is taken. And once you've been caught, then all of the better, stronger methods that earn a lot more money, like whole carding, three card poker, are going to become unavailable to you. So why do you want to use a method that's going to get you trespassed, photographed, have your identity distributed, um, when you could use other methods that will keep you much more discreet and keep you um, viable for a lot longer period of time? So um, card counting is just um, not a wise move for an, for a player until he really understands the dangers that it involves and makes that choice sort of consciously for whatever reason. But I, I would never recommend it as a beginning method because among other things, all the other things, you're going to get caught. And usually beginners are not as hyper aware of surveillance as people who have a lot more experience in casinos. So you're going to get caught and then what? Then what are you going to do? So what should you do as a new advantage player? Well, let me just give you some um, tips here. Learn to count cards. Everybody needs to count, know how to count cards. Um, but if you actually are in a situation where you're wondering what you should do, only count cards as a last resort. Or if it happens that you're in some very lucrative situation to count cards, um, or you're on a team, or there's some other reason, but it's not the sort of thing that you want to make your very first tool in your arsenal. And, and unfortunately, for most people, that's exactly what they do, is you make it their first tool. And avoid the endless dive into the card counting abyss and having a singular focus on card counting. There's so much information available. There are courses you can take, seminars, websites, endless books and videos and YouTubes about card counting. And it's just not worth it. I mean, the, the financial return for the investment of time if you spent that same time learning other methods would just be so much um, better for you as a young player. One of the d things you definitely want to do the best you can is meet and um, share information and, and get trusted by other advanced advantage players who are out there because there are so many methods um, available, but it's not necessarily the case that you can know all the tricks for how to do them in a casino. So you need to network. You need to be very well trusted and liked. Um, there are some websites you can visit that will uh, allow you to meet some people, maybe. Uh, but you have to be, um, you have to put yourself out there. And I don't know how to do that anymore. I mean, I, I haven't been a player in, in uh, over 15 years. So... All I know is that when I met the best players out there in my day, um, it was very humbling, and I, I uh, am forever grateful for those relationships. Um, you need to be able to figure out how to get those sorts of relationships going um, to further your own career. Read anything you can about other methods. So find resources on other ways to beat the house other than blackjack card counting, and think outside the box whenever possible. So let's just talk about, um, well, okay, one more thing. If you're, because I am on both sides of the table, honestly, I also support casinos, or I did professionally for the last um, 12 years of my career. So pretty much that list of things that a, a card counter should do is the same as every um, table games or surveillance employee should do, which is to learn count cards. And you see, all I've done is cross out um, the active 
parts of the previous slide, and you see it's the same exact list for casino employees. So casino employees, read anything you can about other methods. Think outside the box as often as possible for how they're beating the house. So you say, well, what are some of these other methods? Um, there are just so many. Here is a short list. I'm just going to say the words. I'm not going to talk about what they are. You can Google these and maybe you will um, come up with some information. Whole carding, edge sorting, collaboration, or information sharing at the table, ace sequencing, shuffle tracking, skilled cutting, split for less teams, uh, people who vulture slots and video poker, people who exploit free play, match play, and other promotions, loss rebates, uh, a la Don Johnson. Again, edge sorting. Um, is sort of the Phil Ivey um, story, so if you haven't read about that or don't understand that, look up the poker player Phil Ivey along with edge sorting and you'll learn a whole lot about that. There's a lot of good information out there. There are not very many advantage play books out there. You remember the slide I showed you about blackjack books. So here are four books that I recommend for you. Um, Abraham, Abram Alexander's book on advanced tactics in casino advantage play. I believe it's a Kindle only book. Casino Game Protection by Steve Forty. I don't think that one's available. Beyond Counting um, CAA, which is James Gross Jean's second volume on the topic, um, published in 2009, about 700 pages. If you could find that, um, you'd probably run to about $2,000. And Bill Zender's Advantage Play for the Casino Executive. So any of these you can get a hold of um, that are within your um, the limitations of your wallet. I recommend that you uh, grab a copy. They're all brilliant books. So there are also three Advantage Play websites. Um, my own personal blog, AP Heat, is now being hosted at 888casino.com. I have over, I think I have 300 articles up there. Um, you can also go to Stephen Howe's brilliant website, discountgambling.net, where he shows methods to beat any number of games. Uh, he sort of specialized in collusion or information sharing, so having a team at the table who were passing information about the cards they were holding in their hands. Um, Blackjack the Forum, there's a lot of Blackjack websites out there that have message boards. I find this one sort of the um, home of the best experts. I would say that the top experts out there who are actually active in other advantage play methods don't tend to post a lot on these websites, but I will also tell you that on Blackjack the Forum, they they do at least um, hang out there and you might get lucky to be contacted or, or have someone uh, respond to a post you make there. I wrote a book, so I mean that's the other part of this, is that um, my blog, which had at its peak, about 350 articles. I pulled about 170 of them out and turned those into uh, my own book on the topic. So it is available on Amazon.com for $49.95. My book is called Advanced Advantage Play, and it primarily covers um, card counting, side bets of blackjack and baccarat, edge sorting, hole carding, and a little bit uh, on other nuanced situations. So the book is close to 500 pages, um, and it has all the mathematical analysis I did over a period of three years on a lot of different uh, games. So if, you, if nothing else is available for you, I again, if I'm shilling for anything, I'm going to shill my own book. So um, grab a copy of that if you like, and uh, hopefully it'll be valuable to you. So that's the end of this uh, presentation. If you want to visit or contact me, you can contact me through my website, ijmp.org. Other than that, I, um, I'm ending this now. This first video I've done in almost three years, first anything I've done. So um, give me some comments. Let me know what you think. All right. Thanks, everyone.